So usually I try to have short titles. This isn't one. Uh, resolving a vector into components parallel and perpendicular to a second vector. Now we actually do this all of the time. Uh, for instance, if I give you this vector here, we can talk about that in terms of an i and a j vector. Uh, I'm, what I'm doing is resolving a vector into components parallel and perpendicular to another vector, uh, parallel to the i vector, which is perpendicular to the i vector. So I can call this uh, vector uh, 3i plus 4j. I'm resolving it into a second vector, something parallel to i and something perpendicular to i, which is j. So now, what we can do instead of that is take that vector and resolve it into components based upon a different vector. Now, in this case, I can take this vector and I can say, okay, how many steps in um, the this component and how many steps in a component that's perpendicular to that? It wasn't a very good example, so let's use this one instead. Uh, how many steps along here and how many steps along here? We're no longer using i and j. We're using this as our i vector, and we're kind of using the perpendicular as our new j vector. All right, so we're going to resolve a vector into components parallel and perpendicular to the second vector. I think it'll make more sense when we actually get stuck into it. Here's the sort of question we're going to answer. Resolve i plus 3j into rectangular components, one of which is parallel to 2i minus 2j. Let's draw a picture. All right, so there's our uh, two vectors. I'll call i plus 3j a, so that's vector a there. And this one is a 2i minus 2j, so that's vector b. Now, we need to be able to describe a, the vector a, in terms of b and another vector that's perpendicular to it. We're going to use a vector projection here. Uh, so let's project a onto b. Now, you can see that when I project, here's my um, torch that's perpendicular to B. Remember, that's how we do a vector projection. You can see that when I do that, I'm not actually going to cast a shadow onto B itself, but I am going to cast a shadow onto like B's extension out there. That's fine. That just means it's uh, the shadow is like here, and then the vector has a direction that's opposite. The thing that I'm projecting has a vector that's opposite B. All right, not that it matters too much. We can use our vector projection formula uh, to come up with what our vector projection is. And to do that, I'm going to need this guy here, my unit vector. So that's going to be uh, the vector B over the magnitude of um, vector B. So that's 2 squared uh, plus negative 2 squared. All right, so that's going to be like um, 2i minus 2j over uh, root... 8, uh, which can be made a little bit neater. Root 8 is the same as 2 root 2. Uh, so now I've got 2i over 2 root 2 minus 2j over 2 root 2. That gives me uh, a pretty neat little um, thing here. 1 over root 2i minus 1 over root 2 j. Hmm. So now that I have that, I can do my whole vector projection here. Uh, so u is going to be the dot product of a, uh, now, uh, or a dot unit vector b. So it's going to be uh, 1 times 1 on root 2 plus uh, 3 times negative 1 on root 2. Uh, and then I can calculate that. So I may as well keep going here. Um, I'm doing the, the vector itself, so I need to multiply it by the unit vector then. Uh, and the unit vector is 1 on root 2, i minus 1 on root 2, j. Uh, now I'm going to take that and multiply that by that. That's going to be a single number, and we're going to take that single number, that scalar, and multiply it by our unit vector. Try to skip ahead for you a little bit here. Um, so I've just found out that our uh, dot product of a dot unit vector b is negative 2 on root 2. 
and we're going to multiply that now by uh, our unit vector b. Uh, now, negative 2 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, that's going to be the same as negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So we just end up with a nice, neat little negative i there. Uh, and then negative 2 on root 2 times negative 1 on root 2, that's going to be positive 1. So now we end up with positive j. Okay, um, now, what what is that? What is that thing? Um, that's the shadow. That's uh, This is the shadow that this vector is casting upon vector b. Negative i over here, positive j up here. Let me move over a little bit. Okay, and you can see here's my torch, here's my vector, there's the shadow. Uh, you know, obviously things aren't quite to scale, but you get the idea. Now, I'm halfway there uh, because I'm supposed to resolve i and 3j into rectangular components, one of which is parallel to 2i minus 2j. So I found the one that's parallel. The other thing I have to do now is find this vector here. So I know that vector. I know that vector. I need to find the blue vector. Uh, now, thankfully, if you look, we've got vector a is going from the point to the tip here and we found that vector now that pink one it's negative i plus 2j so we need to find that one and it's always the case that when we're resolving um, vectors into rectangular components if we add those rectangular components together we're obviously going to get that new vector which is adding them geometrically we can also do like some subtraction to do that as well so if what I'm going to call the parallel component plus the blue one, which I could call the perpendicular component, equals that component, A. I can rearrange that, right? So I can just say now that A um, minus the parallel component equals the perpendicular component. Uh, if I can spell. And that's that's all we have to do for this last step. The vector projection is kind of the hard bit. From here we just say, okay, well vector A is i plus 3j. I need to subtract the vector that I resolved, negative i plus j. Uh, and now I'll know the perpendicular vector, so i minus minus i is 2i, and 3j minus j is 2j. And let's see if that kind of washes with what we're doing. We're moving 2 across from that point to that point, we're moving 2 up from that point to that point. That makes sense. What's the final answer to that question? Answer. When I resolve i plus 3j... In All right, so I'm going to jump in here real quick because this guy here is going to make a bit of a mistake. All right, so let me show you what's really going on here. We've got this vector that we started with, i plus 3j. We're resolving it into its rectangular components. Now, one of them is this one here, and the other one is this one here. So our final answer up here is going to look like this. Now i plus 3j, i plus 3j is the thing we were trying to resolve into rectangular components, and that's going to be equal to this one down here, which is i plus j plus this one down here. Now it's not necessary, but I'm going to put my little brackets around here just to show that this is one vector and this is another one. Now remember, this vector is this vector right there, and this vector is this vector right there, and combined they make this vector right there. That is resolving a vector into components that are parallel and perpendicular to a second vector.